Coming up today on Airborne, Kyle Franklin unveils Dracula. Americans pilots approve a new contract. A Mexican entertainer is feared lost in a horrific crash. And the FCC asks the FAA to reconsider its electronics ban. I'm Ashley Hale. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. Well, it's been a tough few years for airshow pilot Kyle Franklin. But in the true spirit of a survivor, Kyle is unveiling his next big act for North American airshow audiences in 2013. Kyle is returning to the airshow circuit with a truly monstrous biplane he calls Dracula. Involving over a nine-year design and construction period, Dracula was completed in secrecy. The tapering fuselage, speed ring cowling, and sloped windshield harken back to the racing airplanes of the 1930s. The airbrush blood in the paint comes straight from the opening scene of a horror movie. The modern prop, nearly full span ailerons, and attention to detail on the weight are all 21st century technology. The Franklin Demon 1 biplane, known as Dracula, burst onto the airshow scene at the ICAS convention in Las Vegas this week. Franklin has completed and tested this radical, one-of-a-kind biplane, which generated unprecedented interest among airshow fans, promoters, and sponsors six months before anyone had ever even seen a picture of it. Originally conceived by Kyle's late father, Jimmy, Dracula combines the crowd-pleasing lines of the iconic Waco mystery ship with modern aerodynamics and systems, resulting in a smaller, lighter, significantly more maneuverable and powerful airplane. The debut performance of Dracula will take place at the New Smyrna Beach Balloon and Sky Fest, April 5th through the 7th, 2013. The door may finally be open to full consideration of a merger between American Airlines and U.S. Airways, as Americans' pilots have at last approved a new contract. The Pilots' Union reported Friday that 74% of its members voted to ratify the new agreement that will give them pay raises and a 13.5% stake in Americans' parent, AMR Corporation, upon its emergence from bankruptcy. The pilots' contract was the last piece in Americans' labor puzzle and now gives AMR and its creditors some certainty about the company's future labor cost, making it easier to decide between American as a standalone airline or a merger with U.S. Airways. The agreement is for six years. That 13.5% stock in AMR is estimated to be worth about $100,000 per pilot. Mexican authorities are investigating the crash of a Learjet 25 in the mountains of northern Mexico. Among those lost in the crash is Mexican-American music superstar Ginny Rivera. The wreckage was found in Mexico's Sierra Madre Oriental, where the terrain is very rough and was strewn over 250 to 300 meters. There were no survivors. The Learjet 25, number N345MC, took off from Monterey at 3.30 a.m. local time and was reported missing about 10 minutes later. Rivera had performed a concert there Saturday night. The aircraft was registered to Starwood Management of Las Vegas, Nevada, according to FAA records. It was built in 1969 and had a current registration through 2015. The 43-year-old Rivera was born and raised in Long Beach, California, and is one of the biggest stars of the Mexican regional style known as Grupero music. Also believed aboard the plane were her publicist Arturo Rivera, her lawyer, her makeup artist, and of course, the flight crew. Well, if the pilot is using his iPad, why can't you? That, in essence, is the question that the FCC has asked of the FAA. In a letter to Acting Administrator Michael Huerta, FCC Chairman Julius Janachowski wrote that the FAA should enable greater use of tablets, e-readers, and other portable devices 
during commercial flights. The letter, which was obtained by The Hill, reportedly says, quote, This review comes at a time of tremendous innovation, as mobile devices are increasingly interwoven in our daily lives. They empower people to stay informed and connected with friends and family, and they enable both large and small businesses to be more productive and efficient, helping drive economic growth and boost U.S. competitiveness." End quote. The FAA began this summer to review its policies on the use of electronic devices. However, the agency has consistently said that it would not allow voice communications during flights. Janachowski said that the FCC would work closely with the FAA, the airlines, and the manufacturers to review devices. When is a pilot not a pilot? Well, when he's riding shotgun in a Black Hawk helicopter, flying under its own autonomous control. That bit of science fiction became science fact on November 5th in a low-level flight over the Diablo Range east of San Jose, California. Testing was conducted by the U.S. Army Research, Development, and Engineering Command's Aviation and Missile Center. The aircraft involved was the Rotorcraft Aircrew Systems Concept Airborne Laboratory, or RASCAL. A JU-8-60A Blackhawk equipped with the H.N. Burns 3D LZ laser detection and ranging system for terrain sensing. Throughout the flight, the aircraft maintained an altitude of 200 to 400 feet above ground. During the final obstacle of the field navigation flight, the Safe Landing Area Determination Algorithm autonomously identified a safe landing spot within a forest clearing and commanded the aircraft to approach and hover at 60 feet. Final hover was accurate within a foot. The flight was conducted throughout 23 miles of rugged terrain at an average speed of 40 knots. Pilots were aboard the aircraft, of course, just in case. Following the recommendation of the NTSB, the EAA has published an online listing of Letter of Deviation Authority, or LODA holders, for instruction in experimental aircraft. Categorized geographically by state, the list includes certified flight instructors who are authorized by the FAA to offer certain types of instruction for hire in their experimental aircraft for the purposes of type-specific training. FARs would otherwise prohibit such flight instruction for hire. Having such a list makes finding transition training easier for builders and new owners of experimental aircraft. Proper transition training is an essential first step toward safe operation of experimental aircraft and a key element in the continuing effort to improve aviation safety. Publication of this list was one of four NTSB recommendations made directly to the EAA following the board's recent experimental amateur-built study. The remaining recommendations are works in progress with at least one other nearing completion. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero-news.net. Well, despite the effects of Hurricane Sandy around New York City, where Flight Design USA Lightsport aircraft make landfall, the first of the CTLSI aircraft 
powered by the new fuel-injected Rotax 912 IS engine, have arrived. And they've been shipped on to the Northeast U.S., Florida, the Midwest, and the West Coast. The injected engine was projected by Rotax to improve fuel economy by 20%, along with other improvements. Lone Mountain Aviation President Ken Sherado said, quote, We received and assembled one of the first CTLSI aircraft with the new Rotax power plant. Besides the fuel economy, the CTLSI with the 912 IS engine runs smoother and starts easier, end quote. As with all Rotax engines, 91-octane automobile gasoline works very well at lower cost. The engine can also use 100 low-lead avgas or can mix either in any proportion. While demand is high for the new I version of the LSA, airplanes with the carbureted 912 ULS engine are also available. Hawker Beechcraft said last week that the disclosure statement filed in connection with the company's Joint Plan of Reorganization, or POR, has been approved by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York. Court approval allows Hawker Beechcraft to begin soliciting approval of the POR from its creditors. The POR is already supported by the Official Committee of Unsecured Creditors and holders of a majority of the obligations under the company's pre-petition credit facility and senior unsecured bonds have also committed to support it. The voting process will be completed by January 22, 2013, and the company will seek approval from the court to exit bankruptcy at the confirmation hearing scheduled for January 31, 2013. And now it's time for Aero Video of the Week. I don't mind. Today, our AVW is one of those sites you won't normally see. This three minute video is a ride along on the taxi roll and takeoff of a C5, as seen from the landing gear. To find it, search YouTube for C5 gear on taxi and takeoff, and then hold on tight. Finally, today on Airborne, children of all ages will be able to track Santa Claus on his annual journey, thanks to the North American Aerospace Defense Command. The NORAD Track Santa website is up and running. The site features a holiday countdown, games and daily activities, video messages from students around the world, and more. And it's available in English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, and Chinese. Official apps are also available in the Windows Store, the Apple Store, and Google Play. So parents and children can count down the days until Santa's launch on their smartphones and tablets. Tracking opportunities are also offered on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google+. Santa followers just need to type at NORAD Santa into each search engine to get started. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, December 11th. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again this Friday for another edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.